I may be full-time on YouTube, but I still pick up the occasional odd job. And today I've got a client who wanted to put together five mini PCs for a CAD and 3D printing space. And I figured you guys might want to come along for the ride. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Like I said in the intro, today we're putting together five mini PCs for a client who wanted a CAD and 3D printing workspace for his team to be able to work on. Basically, he needed some PCs that can run Onshape and some other online CAD programs, as well as some local 3D printing tools. And knowing those specs, I knew exactly the direction I wanted to go. I've deployed literally thousands of Nook-style PCs over the years, whether it was for business or education use. The reason I like them so much is they take up so little space and draw such little power, but for the average computing user, you can get a lot of performance out of them. And that's even more true today with how insanely performant AMD's modern APUs have been. Today we're going with five of the Minis Forum UM890 Pro mini PCs, and these are rocking AMD's 8945HS 8-core Zen 4 APU along with 780M graphics. Now that combination might sound fairly familiar to those of you who watch me for my gaming handheld reviews, as the 8840U is one of AMD's most popular choices for gaming handhelds. In a mini PC, the 8945HS is a slightly higher power variant of that processor with the same exact graphics APU, but the frequencies that you can hit are a little bit higher. So inside the box, we have the UM890 Pro itself in a very nice looking little package. We've got an HDMI cable, a power cable with the C12 power plug on the end of it, as well as a very small little power brick right here. The other thing that I love seeing included in the box is a VESA stand. So you can actually bolt these onto the back of a monitor and basically create your own all-in-one mini PCs. A really, really nice option if you want to keep your desks fairly clean, especially if it's going to be more of a community style desk where someone sits down at a workstation and starts working without having to bring a laptop or having cables strewn everywhere. Interesting. That's something I didn't expect to see in the box. This is an M.2 to Oculink adapter. So if you wanted to hook this up to an external graphics dock, uh, this comes with uh, a built-in solution. I didn't expect to see that. That's kind of cool. And that's basically it. Uh, the nice thing about mini PCs is you get, again, a lot of power in a very compact package. But if you're someone who is selling a solution, uh, these are easy to put together because all you have to do is basically take out the screws on the bottom of this, install your own SSD and memory, and you've got a package that is ready to sell to clients. You're not building a tower PC. You're not sourcing 15 different components and worrying about warranty and support for power supplies and cases and fans and heat sinks and all that kind of stuff. It's literally just this one little box. So one component plus an SSD and memory. And the less components that you have to support and the easier it is to assemble everything and get it to your end client, the cheaper it is for your end client and the more money you make in return. One thing that is missing in the box that I would like to see is a little bit of a quick start guide to show you how to disassemble the mini PC itself and install your SSD in memory, because that's not really obvious when I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm sure there's four screws under these rubber pads here, but it would be nice to confirm that when opening the box. Aha! Now I'm glad I uh, didn't take those rubber feet off because this top panel is magnetic, and then there's four screws inside of here that allow you to take the center section out. So uh, I'd like to see some documentation included in the box. That would be really swell. Okay, and with those four screws removed, we just have to lift up on this top panel right here. Come on, there we go. There is a fan header right under here that simply unplugs, and then we can flip this out of the way and we have access to our two M.2 ports and our two DDR5 SODIM memory slots. And again, this first M.2 slot right here in the center of the machine, that we can install our Oculink adapter into. There's a dummy port on the back that allows the Oculink port to pass through. And then we're gonna install our SSD into the top M.2 slot right here. As far as what I'm putting into these machines, I've got a silicon power UD90 Gen 4x4 one terabyte NVMe drive. This has speeds upwards of about 7,000 megabytes per second in sequential reads and writes and should be more than fast enough for this application. We've also got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 from Team Group. 
Now, while I have worked with all of these companies before, I think it should go without saying that none of this is obviously sponsored. This is all things that I am doing on my own. I am selling these parts to a client of mine, and they're just parts that I've used before, have been very, very reliable for me, and I would absolutely recommend any of you using as well. And in goes our SSD. And since we've got it, we'll go ahead and install this Oculink M.2 adapter. And should look a little something like that. Overall, pretty easy process. One thing I do like to see is on the bottom side of this top fan, there's actually a heatsink compound for your M.2 accessories. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply that right now. Flip this back around and get our fan plugged back in there. And we'll finish buttoning this one up. And that's that. We have one machine that is ready to be imaged with Windows. Uh, other features on this machine that I really do like, this supports up to quad displays. Uh, we've got an HDMI and a display port, as well as a USB 4 on the rear and another USB 4 on the front. Uh, you can break those out into individual display ports, supporting up to four 8K displays. We've also got a pair of 2.5 gigabit network ports on the rear, a pair of USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports on the rear, and another pair of USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports on the front. And yes, I hate saying USB 3.2 Gen 2. Such a stupid name. But this thing's ready to go, and now I just have to do that four more times, and we can get to the software part of this. All right, five SSDs, 10 sticks of RAM, and five Windows 11 Pro installs later, and, uh... We're ready to talk about these things. Overall, for the money, I am really impressed with the hardware that we have inside of here. Now, obviously, we've got the Ryzen 9 8945HS 8 core CPU with the 780M APU. Now, the most obvious comparison you can make is to some of the more modern gaming handhelds, like the One X Player, One X Fly, with the 8840U that I have right here. But it is a little bit more complicated than that. Now, obviously, they share basically the same CPU in the 8840U versus the 8945HS. But the desktop has a little bit better cooling support and has a fully unlocked TDP, meaning you can pull 65 watts out of the desktop, whereas the mobile system is limited to closer to 35 watts. That higher TDP mainly affects the CPU performance, and you can plainly see that in my Cinebench R23 results, where on the One X Fly on the 8840U, we got about a 13,450 multi-threaded score. On the 8945HS, we're looking closer to 17,371. Not that you'd be buying the One X Fly for its CPU multi-threaded workstation performance, but we are seeing about a 30% increase inside of the mini PC with its better cooling system and higher TDP. While the graphics performance is also better inside of the mini PC, keep in mind that we're using the same number of compute units and essentially the same TDP when it comes to graphics. We're maxing out at about 2800 megahertz on both the One X Fly as well as the Mini's Forum UM890. When it comes to gaming and graphics performance, we're seeing about a 4 to 6% improvement in the UM890 versus the One X Fly. That is inside of 3D Mark Firestrike, 3D Mark Time Spy, Steel Nomad Light, and Speedway Synthetic Tests. So while it'd be quick to dismiss this as just another mini PC with basically the same hardware as a gaming handheld, keep in mind that the One X Fly with the 8840U is $1,000. Now for that, you get a battery and a 120 hertz OLED screen. But at just $606 fully built with a one terabyte SSD and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 memory, this is a pretty compelling package in a very low power draw environment. For this same client, for the same use case just a couple years ago, I was building full-on desktop PCs with RTX 2060s and charging about $1,100 per desktop to do that. However, with the 8945HS, we've got enough graphics performance to run all of his CAD applications in a much more affordable package. I'm spending less time sourcing components, I'm spending less time putting these systems together, and he's saving about 40% of his overall cost and complexity, all in a system that draws significantly less power. At full tilt under Cinebench R23 workloads, we're seeing only about 73 to 75 watts drawn from the wall, and the APU inside of here is drawing about 65 watts of power. During more realistic daily use, you could see these idling at between 20 and 30 watts, even when running CAD applications. And that is a pretty incredible value.
So a little bit of a different video, but I hope you enjoyed this kind of glance behind the curtain at the thing that I used to do pretty much for about 50% of my day job. That was specking out PCs for specific use cases for clients. Sometimes it's not about finding the absolute fastest solution, it's about what's finding the best solution for your client and their specific use case. While we could have very easily specced out $1,200 desktop PCs the second I heard CAD as a requirement, looking more closely at what the client actually needs and thinking about space constraints and your own workflow, these are a pretty great solution and ended up saving my client quite a bit of money. If you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Blue Sky at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And especially if you like this kind of content and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description and will get you exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can hang out with myself as well as all the awesome folks that hang out there every single week. And that's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. God, I love coffee. Here for today is from Bradley Brew Project. It is the Unicorn Girls Hazy IPA, clocking in at 5.4%. Uh, Bradley Brewing is out of Bradley Beach, New Jersey. It's their Unicorn Girls Hazy IPA with aromas and notes of citrus, melon, and strawberry. So the Unicorn Girls Hazy IPA. This is an interesting hazy. What am I supposed to be tasting here? Citrus, melon, and strawberry. This is a hazy that almost has like a, a creamy texture to it. It's like a melon rind flavored smoothie. There's citrus here, but it's just that lemony, zesty, citrus, super acidic bite. It's not a real pleasant citrus. There's melon in here. It tastes like a melon fruit cocktail, like the kind your aunt brings at Christmas time that's just like melon and cantaloupe mixed with a bunch of whipped cream. Um, it's a little sweet. It's very dry. It's very creamy, but the melon flavor is just so buried it's hard to it's hard to pull it out i can tell it's there but it's not real pronounced and it's not genuinely a good flavor and then there's supposed to be strawberry in here i don't get any strawberry yeah what i get is a mid fruit salad a mid fruit salad that they also added some bad pineapple to and so it it burns on the way down Cannot say I'm the biggest fan of this one.